Okay, so for this episode, we're going to be doing a little bit of a restoration project, uh, which basically is just going to involve a lot of sanding, um, more sanding than anything else, I think, really, um, and a little bit of painting and some uh, transferring. So what I have here is a chest I picked up from the tip, um, picked up for about five, or something, a pine, basic pine chest. Um, but I thought it would be quite nice to put bits of linen and towels and bed linen and whatever in it. Um, so it's a horrible, horrible purple colour and it's a really thick uh, paint they've put onto it and really sloppy job as well. Um, so what I'm going to have to do is take all that off um, before anything else. Um, also going to have to clean up these hinges because the paint, they've got it everywhere, so I'm going to have to do that um, trying not to damage them too much and uh, because they're kind of a, like a brassy effect. They're not actually brass, they're just sort of an effect. Um, so I want to keep them as they are really. Um, I'm going to reposition them because they're actually put on wrong or incorrectly because they've actually put them under themselves so the lid is actually got a slight slant instead of actually running the um, back end of the hinge down the back of the leg here um, to keep it flush and so I'll probably reset it as well um, and whatnot. So what I'm going to do now um, is sand this off, get it all back to uh, normal pine um, and go from there. Oh and I don't know if you notice, I cleaned up my uh, workshop a little bit which is quite nice, I managed to get loads of stuff out. Um, got a load of wood over there that I'm going to be using for another project which will come later on but uh, Got my rattle table over, over the side there, got my uh, extractor down there. Um, hopefully that's where my bandsaw is going to go when I get it. So um, kind of part of the reason why I'm tidying up, plus it's just a blooming mess. So uh, yeah, let's crack on. <laughs> on there really thick. I think um, for the rest of it I'm going to have to use some uh, paint stripper to be honest because that's just going to take forever. <laughs> uh, oh well. Okay basically um, that's going to take way too long so what I've done is I've gone and bought a paint stripper and this is actually um, a kind of friendly one if you will. Um, it's uh, basically you paint it on and let it dry out, but it's meant to be kind of um, safe to the environment and easy on your hands and you don't need to ventilate the room. So, uh, always, oh, it's like a gel. Weird. It's water based, I think. So, um, yeah. uh, so obviously, always read the instructions um, and use it carefully. Right. I'm just going to get on with it. Okay, so, so far it's taken me absolutely ages just to get to the phase that I'm at now um, with the paint sanded not really far down at all. This has actually had two coats of paint stripper on it uh, and quite a bit of sanding. The um, problem is the person who obviously owned this before um, didn't prime the wood so the gloss has soaked right into the grain um, and that's causing me some serious problems. So what I've decided is I'm going to leave it at this stage uh, scrape off any little remnants of um, bits of paint there are uh, and then just going to prime it um, and, and leave it under there um, and when I give it that worn look hopefully it shouldn't shine through too or shouldn't come through too much because I'm uh, because the, the primer will be there as well but uh, we'll see how it goes but what I'm also going to do is because this is a, a little bit rickety because it's only a cheap thing that's uh, been knocked up I think or maybe even a kit form that you get from a uh, like a garden centre or, or a home centre or something. Um, it's, it's a little bit. It, it's, it's not got. It's not as rigid as as, as I'd like it. So what I'm um, going to do is I'm actually going to make it look panelled. So I'm going to put some strips around all four sides to give it some rigidity and to, to make it look a little bit nicer. What I've decided to do is because it's going to be painted, I don't want to use any specific kind of nice wood as such because. Um, it kind of defeats the object of using nice oak or something like that and I haven't really got that many pieces that are uh, big enough for it. Uh, so what I'm going to use is this uh, scrap ply that I've got because it's got a jaggedy edge I'm just going to strain it up on the uh, table saw and then we'll measure up and uh, cut it to size. <laughs> Yeah, I 
And this is what it should look like of all four sections in place. Won't you choose somewhere, baby? Somewhere to spend my dough. Okay, so now that we have all four sides done, we need to make a start on the uh, lid to the box. Um, I'm going to do the same again, I'm just going to put uh, four bits around the edges. Uh, that's going to strengthen it up because it's, it's quite weak actually. Uh, it's actually a, uh, about two mil out, one end to the other as well. Something else I should mention is I've put a couple of screws in, uh, or three screws on either side at the bottom, um, into the side sections that hold the slats in at the bottom, that's because it was a little bit weak. And, um, as long as, uh, as well as the size, it's going to give it some rigidity. Uh, also, notice that a lot of the screws were loose um, that were already in it, so I've tightened all them up as well. Um, so, what we're going to, like I say, what we're going to do now is I'm going to uh, put these uh, top sections on, and then we're going to finish that off with some beading uh, later on. And for this bit, instead of the jigsaw, I'm going to be using my nice new bandsaw. Yes, I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to strengthen the centre of the uh, slats here because they've got some flex in them but when there's a lot of weight in them I'm a bit, a bit afraid that they're going to uh, sort of bow down in the middle um, so what I'm going to do is I found this old slat here so what, what I'm going to do is just take out the two nails, the one at either end it's on an airing cupboard I believe, an old uh, airing cupboard slat I'm just going to take out the two nails and I'm just going to trim it down, sole it in, glue it um, and probably nail it from either side or maybe glue it and sort of clamp it. Either way it's going to create a nice bit of support in the middle. Also, I'm not sure if you can quite see that but there's three screws in the side here. That's the screws I said earlier that I uh, put in uh, just to strengthen these pieces here. Because uh, they, I couldn't really see any fixings where they're attached to this side here, maybe just glued or maybe there's some little tacks that I didn't notice before um, I put the plow on the side but I thought putting Putting a screw in from this side would get a nice bit of strength, uh, stop from coming off. It's only going to be a thin piece just to cap it off, just to neaten it up a little bit. Uh, so you need to just cut three more pieces and uh, bother your uncle. My door is now down. Baby, are you coming with me? No, Daddy. Baby, I'm going, going right on. I'm going straight home. Mm, I'm going, I'm going on. I'm going home, Daddy. Cause all my door is now done. I'm going, going right on. Okay, so the next job I'm going to do is trim down these edges because they have about a four mil overhang from the actual lid itself.
next thing I'm going to do is start applying the primer. So to stop the paint coming in through the gaps here on the slats of wood, I'm going to start putting some masking tape on. Now if it all sanded and wiped down, we need to apply the primer or our undercoat. Now you'll notice here that it's already got um, some white on it. Now that's actually because I started using a uh, spray paint and to be honest it was absolutely awful. Um, definitely I think a firm believer of the brush on undercoat, which is what I'm using here obviously. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, I, E So now that we've finished our two coats of primer all the way around, uh, we need to put the actual final coat of paint on. Uh, but before we do that, I want to put on the uh, hinges or install the hinges. Um, what I've gone and done is I've, I've brought uh, a new set of hinges because the original ones that I've got here um, was like a gold colour and they weren't flush, uh, flush fit. So basically, the, whenever they were, when they were on it before, the um, lid had a slight angle to it. Um, and I don't want it to look like that, I want it to look nice. So what I've gone and done is I've bought some flush fit antique bronze hinges here which are going to fit on this like so. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to um, take a, uh, a little piece out of there uh, so they fit in nicely onto the wood itself. Uh, I've also um, gone and bought a new chain for the lid. Um, I've actually bought enough to do both sides because um, again the other one was uh, a gold colour and now that I've changed the hinges to a um, different colour, uh, the gold wouldn't have gone with it, so I bought uh, a more antique looking style black chain uh, and that should give it a bit more of an authentic fit. So what we're going to do now is we're going to um, chisel out this section. I've actually already marked round the, the um, hinges and what we're going to do is just chisel that out so we can screw these in. Okay, so what I'm going to do is space it slightly away from the inner edge here. That will ensure nice free movement of the of the hinge. And I'm just going to take my marking out here and mark a hole to pre-drill. So what we're going to do now is we're going to attach the chain that holds the lid or stops the lid from falling backwards um, and to keep within the rustic uh, sort of theme what I'm going to do is, uh, what I have done rather, is I've gone into one of my uh, jars of odds and ends and I've picked out a couple of um, sort of manky sort of looking screws with a bit of tiny bit of surface rust on them um, and I want them like that because like I say I want to keep it sort of authentic looking and old and rustic so uh, for me that's just perfect and they're odd as well which is even better. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now is going to uh, drill a little pilot hole and we're going to attach the, the chain. Yeah. 
And then here comes the part where we uh, rub some of the paint down to make it more rustic looking. Now you can either do this by hand with sandpaper or you can use a uh, power sander which is what I'm actually going to do. Uh, the only thing is you need to go a bit easy I think when you're using a power sander obviously because it's a bit more aggressive than when you're doing it by hand. Um, I've also chosen to use a uh, fine grip sandpaper. Um, I think this is really just common sense because if you use too thick it'll be even more aggressive so uh, this should work quite nicely so let's get going. Okay, so now I've done the sand to make it look all worn, and what I'm going to do is protect this with a thin layer of uh, varnish. Now, I know um, you're probably thinking, well, the whole point is it's meant to be getting worn because you know, paint gets rubbed off in, in the certain areas where it would get a lot of wear, but I want to keep it as it is. I don't want to keep chipping off even more because this does actually chip quite easily, this paint. Although it's not doing it now, typical, but it has been there. So, um, so what I'm going to do is put a, uh, a thin layer of varnish, and I'm going to use the stuff I always use, which is the um, satin uh, eco varnish because it's just great stuff. So, like I say, just a thin thin coat, and that should just give it some protection. Okay, so there we have it, a nicely refurbished storage box. Uh, and not a bad job for do you say so myself. Um, I did have a nice, um, or a little surprise, uh, when I put the varnish on. Um, it's actually done a really cool thing to this chalky paint that I used. Um, it's basically uh, made it all tarnished and um, given it sort of a yellow effect, in it, or, or patches of yellow and fadedness, uh, which I really, like I said, I wasn't expecting. Um, I think what's happened, because the chalky paint is what it is, it's, it's a thin sort of, uh, paint that easily scratches and chips and um, fades over time. It's got that old-fashioned look, um, and you've got the wetness, um, quite a heavy wetness of that, especially that varnish that I use. It's um, it's like eco stuff, like I say, so it's water-based. Um, and it's what it's done. I think is it's actually um, almost taken a layer of of the colour out of the chalky paint. And it's actually, like I say, created this these uh, patches of yellow and uh, staining, which I think is really cool because it's added to the effect even more. Um, so yeah, quite a uh, nice surprise on that. Um, not a bad little project, just needs a um, few bits of um, scrap wood and obviously a lot of wood glue like always um, and a lot of patience because obviously the drying time um, was quite bad. It's not so much the glue, it was that solvent um, primer I used. I really, to be honest, I don't recommend that and another thing as well, that's why I had to use a lot more paint, uh, or chalky paint rather, um, than what it said on the tin. Um, it's that, I think it's really one coat but I put about three or four coats on the end. Um, because it really doesn't stick to solvent, even if you sand it down, it's not brilliant. Water paste, if you're going to use chalky paint, I think, in future. Uh, that's a lesson that I've learned anyway. Uh, and that's what it's all about, it's learning lessons, isn't it? You know, um, trial and error, as it were. Um, again, um, or rather, the, the hardware, that is my discretion, you don't have to do that. You know, if you've got a box, like I had with uh, the chain and, and the... Uh, 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 what's the word? That's hinges. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> uh, if you have the chain hinges already on it, um, you don't need to change them. It's only because I, I felt I wanted to, because I wanted that extra aged look about it. Um, and it's obviously a great place to store your blankets and towels or bedding or whatever, or even toys for you know your children if you've got any children. Um, just for anything really, tools. You could use it as a good uh, tool chest. To be fair, um, you could you know add some bits into it, some little. Um, trays that pull out, you can use it for anything really, but um, yeah, not a bad project, considering I think I only paid about £5 um, down a tip for this, for the old purple thing that you saw at the beginning, uh, that was all rickety and whatnot, I mean this thing is really sturdy now, so um, it's got a lot of rigidity in it, so um, it should last for years now, uh, which is really, really good, because it's, uh, like I say, £5 to buy it, and then just a bit of paint and a uh, little bit of hardware, um, loads of paint left, stupid amounts of paint left, uh, which is a bit annoying because now I've done this, my uh, partner wants me to do the same to the shelving unit in the bathroom. <laughs> as if I haven't got a list as long as my arm already. Um, but there you go. Things we do for our loved ones. <laughs> um, but yeah, hope you enjoyed that project. Um, so 
If you haven't uh, clicked the thumbs up, please do, it's down there. Um, and please feel free to leave a comment. Um, it's always nice to have uh, people comment on my videos, or it doesn't matter if it's uh, criticism, if bad or good, it doesn't matter. Hint, uh, tips are always good. And check out my Facebook page. Uh, again, I haven't really been on there recently, but I'm gonna try and get back to that and get that up and running as well. It'd be nice to see some of you um, putting your own photos up there or what, of what you've done or um, maybe put a little short video on there you know of you building something that's quite cool or talking about it you know or have some discussions it's always nice um, so yeah hope you enjoyed the video and um, happy woodwork until, later, until next time take care